Hi guys, this is Jamie with DropPacket.org. Today we're going to go over the three most popular types of WAN connectivity. Broadband, cable, DIA, and MPLS. Now the easiest way to compare these three is just draw a simple graph. Cost versus SLA. Broadband is going to be your cheapest cost, but you're going to get the least amount of SLAs with it. Typically you get very little or no performance based SLAs and little to no repair SLAs. DIA is the next step up. You're going to pay a little bit more, but you typically get re good repair SLAs with that. Sometimes you get performance SLAs, but not, not typically. The most expensive of these options is MPLS, which include both performance and repair SLAs. Today we're going to cover four topics. Speed options, MTU size, peering, and broadband extras. For speed options, the thing to keep in mind here is broadband is typically asymmetrical. So you're going to have a really large download speed and usually a limited upload speed. So some examples of that are 50 by 10, 100 by 20, 300 by 20. And this excludes services that are symmetrical or near symmetrical, such as Fios. This is typically what a cable company will give you. DIA and MPLS, on the other hand, are symmetrical. So if you buy 50 meg service, you're going to get 50 meg up and down. Another thing to keep in mind is MTU size. If you have any legacy applications that can't accept fragmented packets or frames, you're going to want to keep this in mind. You're especially going to want to test these applications in a lab environment before rolling out broadband to enterprise-wide. So a few numbers to keep in mind. With broadband, you're typically going to get 1470, sometimes even less, available MTU size. DIA and MPLS are going to use traditional Ethernet access methods, which would give you the typical 1500 up to 9100. Another thing you want to keep in mind is peering, or how packets are going to get from end to end. In this top example, you have a remote site on one ISP, a headquarters on a different ISP, and you're running IPsec between them. If there's any kind of congestion between these ISPs, you might experience packet loss, delay, or jitter on your IPsec service. The problem becomes you won't have any visibility or control over these peering points. And because broadband comes with little to no performance SLA, you won't really have any recourse to get any one of these ISPs to help you troubleshoot that. The next example is DIA, where you typically buy the connections from the same provider on both ends. That means your IPsec is writing the same network end to end. You'll have a lot more visibility, typically in the DIA provider's user portal, to be able to see packet loss and bandwidth on those two end ports. The ISP themselves usually don't give much of performance SLA with DIA but they'll have more visibility to that, so they might be more willing to help you troubleshoot issues. MPLS, same concept, you're all on the same ISP, but the product comes with higher SLAs for performance. So the provider is most likely going to help you troubleshoot packet loss, delay, and jitter without any problems. If you're going to go to the broadband route, there's a few things you want to keep in mind during your test phase. A lot of the popular cable modems out there today use an Intel Puma chipset, which has been known to limit IPsec traffic and encrypted traffic in general to 80% or less throughput in some cases. You want to make sure you catch this during the test phase before you roll broadband out in production. Very easy to test for, you simply plug a laptop into the cable modem, run a speed test. You typically get near what you subscribe to. Unplug the laptop. Plug in your firewall or your router and run IPsec back to your headquarters. Run another speed test. If you get 80% or less, one thing to consider is you might need a new modem. If you reach out to your provider, they typically have multiple options available. You can simply try another modem with them. Once you find one that works, a lot of providers allow you to provide your own modem, in which case you can take that one that you know works and deploy it across the nation different sites. One other thing to keep in mind is some broadband providers use WAN accelerators within their core. 
That's another thing that could potentially affect IPsec traffic. If you have packets going from one end to the other, and the provider's running WAN accelerators within their core, your IPsec traffic typically can't be accelerated, and it'll hit a policer going across the core. If this happens, similar to the peering issues, you won't have much visibility of what's going on within the core or across the network. You're simply going to experience packet drops on the other end, possibly voice issues. Again, because broadband doesn't come with much of a performance SLA, you're not going to have much recourse. Just a quick summary of what we covered today. We went over the three most popular WAN access technologies. Broadband, DIA, and MPLS. Just keep in mind, broadband is usually the cheapest, it comes with the worst SLAs. DIA is middle of the road, a little higher cost, better SLAs. MPLS, most expensive, comes with the best SLAs. If you have any questions, feel free to ask down below in comments. As always, please subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching.